What's up guys, Drew Tucker here with Mallet Lab and we are continuing our discussion today on grips. We're gonna talk about a few of the most common Stevens grips fails that I've seen. Stevens grip fail number one, the Mr. Roboto. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. I call this the Mr. Roboto because people who fall victim to this pretty much never use their wrists. All of their pivot is from the elbow. So how can you become a real flesh and blood kid and no longer be a Mr. Roboto? Recognize that there are four major fulcrum points on your arm that create your stroke. The first one is your wrist. The next one is your elbow. The next one is your shoulder. And then of course you have your finger. Creating a great stroke and being able to continue to stay healthy and play over a long period of time involves using the correct amount of each fulcrum at the desired time. But the number one place that your stroke needs to come from is your wrist. So why is the wrist so important? Well, the wrist makes the best use of all of your major and minor muscle groups that run all the way from your shoulder all the way down through your fingers. Using your wrist allows you to play stronger, allows you to play louder, allows you to play faster, and it allows you to do so with the least amount of tension. And that is what's going to keep you injury free for as long as possible. Now, if I'm just using my elbow, I won't be able to play that fast for very long. So does that mean that you should only use your wrists all the time? Well, no. Again, creating the best stroke for the application that you're using it involves using the proper ratio of each of those pivot points on your arm, always make sure your wrist stroke is the predominant stroke that you're using. So what you notice in that last example is I started off with a wrist stroke and to add a little bit more sound, a little bit more weight, I started pivoting a little bit from my elbow. But the predominant point that my stroke came from was still my wrist. Use a mirror, videotape yourself, make sure that you have your wrist stroke on point, and then after that you can start adding a little bit of finger, a little bit of arm, a little bit of elbow, a little bit from anywhere you need to to get the desired effect. But as always, make sure the wrist stroke is the predominant place that your stroke is coming from. The second fail that I notice most often is what I like to call the praying mantis. This is when students hold their hands so high up off the board that they point downward at the board with their mallets. The number one purpose of any technique is to facilitate great sound. And it is almost impossible to make good quality sounds if you're playing with this Stevens grip fail. Why is that? Well, when you're playing this way, you're automatically not in a good position to hit with the sweet spot of the mallet on the sweet spot of the bar. So as you start to play this way, you'll notice that you're hitting with the yarn part, the top part of the mallet, as opposed to the middle of the core where the best sound is produced. With the same amount of stroke, by lowering your hand, you're able to create much better sound without adding any more effort. People tend to do this oftentimes because they start playing Steven's grip too early and don't have the proper wrist strength to make the full rotation that's required to create great sound from a low plane. So they lift their wrists and they have less of a wrist stroke to go from this position to making contact with the bar. So what can we do? Well, basically lower your arms and work on your full wrist rotation in order to create the best sound possible. So you'll notice in those few examples that the sound quality got significantly better 
as I lowered my wrists. This is because I was allowing the mallet to do its part in creating great sounds by making sure that I was striking the bar with the sweet spot on the mallet head, as opposed to the yarn spot at the top of the mallet head. Make sure you're taking a look at your stroke, working on that wrist turn so you can create the best sounds possible out of your instrument. The third fail that I see most often is all thumbs. This guy! <laughs> Instead of having your first knuckle and your thumb lined up so as to create the best angle for your mallets, as well as the best, most consistent stroke, many people will cheat by bringing in that first knuckle so that the mallet rests on their second knuckle and pushing out their thumb. Oftentimes, this happens because you're trying to increase the speed of your inner two mallets as sort of a cheat instead of actually working on a full wrist rotation. The problem is, while this may work sort of, for a little bit of time, A, you won't look like anybody else because this looks bad. B, I already feel my arm starting to tense up. I feel my wrist starting to tense up. Oh, there it is in my elbow. Pretty much about to push to failure. So what can we do? Well, again, make sure you're practicing with a mirror or videotaping your practice and make sure that you're keeping your first knuckle and your thumb together, even when you're playing, just your inner two mallets. Don't fall into the habit of curling this finger down and pushing your thumb out to try to shortcut getting strong strokes out of your rotation. Again, my name is Drew from Mallet Lab. Thank you very much. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much, guys.